because I just really enjoyed following you. And I just feel like it's so important to just surround yourself with people who are like-minded and are motivated, positive people. And I feel like I show up so much on social media and I love, love seeing other realtors and what they're doing in their business and all the behind the scenes and stuff like she's, you I always am like looking, okay, what's Bethany doing today? And it's just fun to watch. People like to see that. So I'm excited for her to be on here today to share with you guys all the tips and suggestions. Don't forget any questions that you have, please put them in the chat so that uh, we can ask Bethany. But why don't you share with everybody just a little bit about you so that for they can sure. Yeah. So Bethany Martinez, I am a real estate agent here in South Florida. So I pretty much work all of South Florida, Broward County, because I grew up in Broward to Miami-Dade and I live in Miami-Dade. And it's only about like 45 minutes from one stretch to the next in the area that I work. Um, so if anybody has any referrals, you know, I can cover them. I have a team of five agents under me. They're all, they all happen to be women, ironically. And I started a team about a year ago. The company I'm with is related ISG, and I love that company. But I'm also the president-elect for the Miami YPN Realtors Association. Um, I will be president next year, which is awesome. And just like you guys have your Realtors Associations in all the cities that you're at, um, ours just happens to be one of the biggest, I think actually the biggest in the U.S., and we have over 50,000 realtors in our in our board. So wow. there's a lot of agents and there's a lot of competition. So in the very beginning, when I started real estate, I knew that um, it was a competitive market. And I just said, well, I'm going to just do whatever I can to stand out. And I come from hospitality. So I always knew a lot of people and I always worked in like the nightlife and the, at the heat arena and different like social gathering places. So I just took whoever I knew in my network from there and transferred it to real estate. And I just try to just stand out with my personality and just always being available and just kind of like, you know, that never letting people forget that you're here to service them. So it's super exciting to be on here. And I've been following Stevie for, I want to say like a couple of years now, you know, and I do this event called females for profit. And I want to say that's when she really stood out to me because she actually like the first year my, I did my event, it wasn't, it, I filled it up with just a bunch of people locally. But then the second year that I did it, I had a few agents like fly in and drive in and it was mind blowing to me that, that, that was happening. And Stevie was one of them. So I just want to say like, that is real support like I, after that i had to see who she was i was constantly like what, checking in on her and just thinking to myself like what could i do in return to i don't know if you ever had anything i'd be driving down to support you or driving up it. but you know it's just nice to see that uh, like all of us can connect and collaborate and work together and support each other even miles away you know yeah, I love it. Um, and just think, like, we would have never connected if both of us didn't show up on social media. Mm -hmm. And even at that event, I had mentioned that I was going and several realtors drove to that event to come meet up with me. And I'm just like, how freaking cool is that? And I don't know if Brittany Knight is on here, but her and I, we had never met before. I picked, I was like, I'll pick you up in Melbourne. We'd never met and we drove down to your event and I feel like we talk all the time now. And it's just like, it's so crazy. Like I've met I can't like, I I believe I've I still don't even feel like I that, that that's real. Like I did an event that someone drove down and met someone new and came to. Yeah. Like that is so surreal. I Here sent the sent her the info. I was like, you want to go to this? She's like, yeah. I was like, all right, I'll pick you up on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's just crazy what you can do with social social media. So like with all the things, you know, that has been going on in the world with COVID-19, you know, it's completely flipped each one of our lives upside down in one way or another. We've all been affected by this, right? And I just, I find it so interesting just to hear from other real estate agents, like how has this affected you? How has your mindset been? How have you stayed positive and still getting business during this time? 
Well, I think, you know, you put in the work way before this to mm -hmm. stay present. So that's where like the real wins happen because all year long you're showing up, you're delivering, you're, you're, you're being available for people. And so I think the hard work is like trying to build a presence right now during these times. It's actually easier because so many people are online, but if you put in the work all year round, regardless of what season you're in, you'll be able to reach the so like now it's just adjusting. I'm actually reading this book in the, I picked this book to read in the book club, 15 ways to grow your business in every economy. And the author actually wrote this book right after the first recession. And she talks about 15 key points of something that you should constantly be doing in your business that will last throughout any economy, any recession. And it's, and the thing, the benefit that we have by being small business owners, meaning like, you know, I, I don't know if anybody has a large brokerage here, but we're all single agents or, you know, broker associates. So we're considered small business owners. We're able to be agile. We're able to make decisions really quick. We're able to pivot and change things in our business from minute to minute versus like a large corporation that has to go through all these like hoops and bounds to just start doing virtual business, right? Like we woke up one day and we turned virtual and what did we do? as agents we adapted we show up mm -hmm. on zoom we wear masks we're doing virtual showings we're now doing whatever it is to get our clients properties like marketed but we make those decisions you know the fact that like the power is really in our hands that's like a win you know so i think to be honest it's like a great and a bad thing but realtors i want to say were the industry overall that was the luckiest right because if, if you weren't prepared just like anybody else even with a nine to five job you're not prepared you don't have a nest egg you don't have a savings then yes it's going to be a struggle but for those who are able to still do business and still practice because like people still need a place to live you know so i think we're super fortunate especially in some of the <coughs> where we haven't been on complete shutdown and we're still able to show and and close and banks are lending but I just want to say, like, I, I choose to be positive. I'm not perfect and not every day is perfect, but those times where I'm down and out, I'm not necessarily sharing those on social media. I'm very real and I'm honest. And if I have a bad day, you'll know it. But most of the time, if I'm going through something, I'm actually going through it. So you might not even see me on social media at all, but when I do show up, I choose to show up in my best self because at the same time, like, that's how I want to be seen. You know, that's what I want people to see when they look at me. Everybody knows that we're human and everybody knows that not every day is perfect, but I just want people to remember like when they look at my page or when they come towards me, they can see positivity and light and they can see that, you know, wins and, and struggles, but like, I rather look at the glass like full than half empty, you know? So that's like, and I, I know you get that too, because I feel like we've yeah. got the same energy, Stevie, but a lot of people are like, thank you so much for just being positive. And I guess it's just, you know, uh, too, like the way that I was raised and just how, how, you know, how I am. And you can't not be who you are. I'd be fake if I was being anything else. So, you know, like if this is me and I show up and this is it, this is just what it is. It's off the internet, it's on the internet. Me changing that just because I'm on IG story wouldn't, wouldn't make, you know, like that's impossible, but that's how I, that's how, why I show up and I get better responses and feedback showing up in that way than I, than I have in any other way. So that's yeah. how I keep pushing. Love yeah. that. And I mean, we know just from, you know, as much as we, um, you know, are on social media, people want real, they want true. They want you to be authentic, right? Yeah, they do. They want you to just, they want to like, I feel like I even follow people for consistency, you know, like you want someone that's consistent that you can like show up on their page and like, know, you know, know you're going to get what you came for, I guess you could say, but also a sense of realness and like knowing that you're able to connect with someone. I mean, how many people that, how many people have you actually seen and follow that you, you feel and you connect and when they yeah. share something you're, you're invested in that, in their life, but you don't even know them, you know? They like sell something and you want to buy it just to support yeah. them, but you never met them before. Just like yeah. people, and I feel like no matter who you are, no matter the size of your following, there are people like that, that feel like that about you, but they can't find you if they can't find you, right? Mm -hmm. They can't see you and follow you and invest in you and share with you if you don't show up and show them and give them something to follow, right? 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. So with all of this going on, how have you shown up more, you know, for your, for all of your audience and everybody that follows you? So I do a lot more of these Zoom, FaceTime, and just it calls like that. I've been showing up a lot more. I think we're forced to. It's not something that we can't even like we have to if we want to be able to interact with people. Um, but then I've also showed up in in different ways, like in different organizations. You know, I've had some extra time to kind of explore different Facebook groups. And I have like, you know, like there none of them have to do with real estate you know there's like a manifester one and there's a this group and i've just kind of like said okay what what group i can align with and feels good to me and i've been showing up in those groups and usually i'm the only realtor in the group so i've already gotten a few referrals in these other groups that i've shown up in because i'm just like taking a chance and trying to join in and sign up for someone's coaching or sign up for someone's virtual event you know and I remember like at the beginning of COVID, there, there people were actually doing virtual events on Eventbrite, right? So they're like, come join us on April 20 something at 8 p.m. We're all gonna do a virtual happy hour. And I would pop up in, in some of those just to say, who could I meet? And to be honest, I didn't really even do that in my, in normal days, like be, at, before COVID, I wasn't doing that. I was so busy and so consumed that I wasn't really like taking the time to, go to events, you know, it's a drive, you gotta get dressed, you gotta get ready, much more time consuming. So during COVID, I've been taking a lot more chances and a lot more opportunities to just show up on different virtual events, show up in different face groups and just get on a call with anybody who wanted to. I this think it's like, I'm you mention that because you, I think a lot of people that I talk to, they forget that you're supposed to be social on social media. It's so much more, it's actually way more valuable than just putting out that post. And that's, I feel like what people are so geared on to. It's like, you gotta be more focused on finding people in your area who are in these Facebook groups, these um, Instagram pages, everyone's got a side hustle or their own business or whatever it is and engaging with them and taking it offline and asking, hey, do you wanna get coffee? Or uh, what I had been doing since that wasn't something that we could do the last 30 days was, hey, do you want to, you know, we had been engaging a little bit and I would just be like, hey, do you want to get on a Zoom call? Let's chat about business and yeah. maybe we can help each other and like build friendships with people, like people that you think that you could really align with and have things in common with. And it doesn't even have to be business related. If you're really into yoga, why not find some girlfriends who are doing yoga in your area? And that's something that you you know, can make a friend with, and then also could potentially build each other, each other's businesses. I think that's so yeah. valuable. I started biking yeah. and now there's like a yeah. whole biking world down here that like yeah. everybody, every day that I post my rides, people are like, let me know when you want to ride. Let me know when you want to ride. Yeah. Let's ride. My neighbor got a bike. My other neighbor wants to go get a bike. She wants to, me to take her tomorrow. And at the same time, I'm like, yo, this, I did this for me. Like, and I, yeah. it's, this is better to ride alone. Cause I can just get on my bike and go. But now uh, my one neighbor started a bike crew where like anybody who's <laughs> to ride, we add their neighbor in this, we add their number in a WhatsApp chat now we have like 35 people in this whatsapp chat that are like the miami biker crew you know so just Love all that. little things that are evolving and and it's just been like really interesting to see how this is all playing out you know for sure i love what you said about that you're using your time now to go find those groups go find those people that you can relate with right it's not yeah. taking us the time that it would have before, yeah. right? And so it's being intentional about who it is that you want to surround and align yourself with. So mm -hmm. I love that you said that. That's that's so great. Yeah. And I like actually signed up for um, a a few coaching groups, right? Like there was like a few girls that I knew that had had these like little online coaching groups. And I kept seeing like people review them and say certain things. So what I did is I signed up for a few of them. And one of them is every what, Monday, Friday. And then another one is every Monday night and Thursday night. And so it's really cool. Cause it's like a group of like 18, eight of, or 10 of us in each group. And they're all people, none of them, which I know um, some, I know a few of the girls in the group, but then 
we're able to like talk and ask questions. And then like these moderators or these people who have created the group have, they're like so interactive and they team us up and accountability partners. So I've made like a whole bunch of new friends through these many type of coaching things that I've signed up for. Um, I even signed up for a coach and like in his group, he, he puts us together with a bunch of other different agents, but all of these, I'm like, perfect referral partners, you know, cause they were agents from all over. And my thing is like, I just want to be a referral partner. Like I just want agents that are from all over to whenever they need someone in South Florida, they think of me. If I just focus on that, I don't even want to focus on getting new business here. I'm just like, when you have someone that moves to South Florida, refer them to me because I mean, here, I'm just going to use my sphere of influence and, and keep working that. But I want like those people who are relocating, you know? So I'm like, what yeah. groups that, I, what groups can I get in that have outside agents? That's, That's what I love about social media. It's like, I love connecting and a huge part of my business is realtor referrals. And it's like, who else are they going to think of in Jacksonville, Florida besides me? And I okay. show up every single day. <laughs> you, can, you cannot forget about me and I won't let you. <laughs> so true. I get asked a lot of social media questions and I think that's what's so awesome about having you on here because you've built, you get referrals from this platform. You get realtor referrals, clients, buyers, sellers. Um, and I get asked, you know, how do you build your following? Like, how did you do that? That's a question I always get asked. So in, I had two different accounts. I had another account before this one, which I'm actually trying to get back. Mm -hmm. Um, but that one had way more following and I'd been working on that one since I first opened Instagram and I didn't have any fault. I had like maybe three or 4,000 followers when I actively started working on it. And then when I decided like, okay, everything needs to change. Like my social media was just, I would post a random picture and nothing really had a purpose. So I decided that I wanted to like anything I had like, I, I did a bunch of different classes, social media, this coaching, whatever. And I came down to this plan of, it's going to be like five different topics that I'm going to post about. And it's not going to be about anything else. There's going to be like one day there's a group shot. One day there's a fe a, like a female empowerment shot. Then, then one day there'll be a selfie or I usually have a selfie and every piece of content is different. So when I was building up my last following, I really had a structure to it. I was like, if it's not about these five things, I'm not posting it. You know, and I remembered I was really strategic and I would follow all agents in all the top cities and any city really, if they had like 10 K followers and up. Cause I always knew like 10 K was like the goal, you know, like that's when you get the swipe up. Like that's like when you get in the double digits. So for me, I was like, I need to get 10 K. So I was like, well, what is everybody else doing? Like, it's not rocket science. So I followed a bunch of other agents that were all like 10 K and higher in different States. And I would just engage with them, engage with them, engage with them. And I would repost their content and share their stuff and like their posts. And I remember like one was selling a $10 marketing, build your brand. And I bought that. And you know, like I was constantly just like, cause th that was my network. That's who I wanted to reach agents. So those were the people that I engaged with. And by them just constantly resharing and reposting the stuff that I was reposting with them was putting me in front of their audience. So I started noticing like a jump in my, like my like engagement and my followers. Cause I started getting a lot of agents from all over, you know, like I would look and see like, who's this person following me? It was an agent from like Utah. So I, I, that's definitely like getting in front of other agents platforms is how I was really realizing like, oh, that's how I can build a wider scale of visibility, you know? And I mean, like, they don't care to post me. Like, I'm not taking away from their market. It's not like someone is going to come in yeah. and, and plus anybody that thinks like that, like thinks in lack that like by us sharing each other's stuff, like it's going to take away from your business. That's just like oh the lack God. mindset, you know, you have to think in abundance and no one's going to take what's for you or the business that's for you. And there is so much money out there in the world. And it's, it's there for those who are willing to go and work for it. So yeah, that's, that's right. There's not a shortage yeah. of houses right now, right? No, there like, is no shortage. <laughs> there is no shortage of houses. Someone wrote a question about you organically grew it yourself and you never paid for followers. Um, no, I never paid for followers, but I did have a, I used to manage like a few business accounts and they were all for like family businesses. Like there was like a, 
um, a whole organic foods one and different things like that, like little side businesses that I had. And what I did is I tried a few of my friends introduced me a few of my friends who have like 50 K and plus they introduced me to these platforms that are like, um, they're like, they follow a bunch of people and then they unfollow a bunch of people and things like that. And I remember using a few of those to grow social media accounts. And honestly, I was like, I didn't, I, I didn't think negatively of them. And I, what I actually thought about them is that they were putting your account in front of other people that would have never seen your account before. And that job is a tedious job, right? So imagine you going following a bunch of people and then like that takes all day long, right? And then imagine going unfollowing all those people. That's such a process. But what happened was we used this one platform that it was able to strategically follow people that liked like organic fruits and stuff like that. And it never unfollowed them. But at the same time, if it like followed some weird person from I don't know where, then you went back and unfollowed those accounts. So they're out there. I know a lot of people are using them. To be honest, I could care less what you did, how you did it. At the end of the day, it, everything is a tool, right? And sometimes just like you hire VAs to like post your content, just like you use platforms like later to schedule your posts in advance, everything is a tool and whatever you decide to use to help your account grow organically, unorganically, if listen, no account, no product out there forces someone to press follow. Someone sees your account and they follow. So it's their choice if they follow you or not. So this stigma about people saying, oh, Oh, people who use these accounts to get fake followers. I mean, there's probably like, you know, when people like celebrities are like, oh, let me pay you 20 bucks and I'll blast your account on my profile and you'll get X amount of followers. All they're doing is they're blasting your account on their profile and they're exposing your account to hundreds of thousands of people that would have never seen your account before. Those people still have to go on and press follow if they like your content and if they like your engagement. And I remember I sat through like a, a social media class with like top, top people who had been like running big accounts for a while and they had talked about it. And I was like, how do you think like businesses run social media accounts. They don't have time to actively engage with one person here and one person there. So they have to mass produce this activity somehow in order to manage five accounts at once. But with my account that I have now, I mean, I only have 13,000 followers and that's just because like, literally I do videos, I do things, I do a large event every year. And every year that I do this event, I get like 500 followers just from the event because I do paid sponsored ads. And when you do ads, it's just putting you in front of a whole different market. Market. someone sees my account and they're like oh I like this girl let me follow her you know so I've noticed that like there's certain times of the year when I host my big events when I get a lot of followers um, and then I noticed like throughout the year just like little workshops little videos different things like that I get a few and then when people share my stories or share my posts on their page then I get more like you can kind of always see like when you get an influx of followers mm -hmm. and someone wrote which post gets the best interaction I don't get it, but it's always a selfie. Like, it's just what it is. It's always a selfie. It's like, you could look like whoever, whatever, but some yeah. reason it's a selfie that people that give you the most interactions. It's a, it's like a pretty picture, like something that's like stimulating to people's eyes. Cause I could post a group shot and unless it's like a bunch of hot, like all my hot girlfriends and whatever, but I could post like a property shot or no one cares. It's so not care about my houses at all. <laughs> and I get it. You know, I try to like all my friends' posts because, like, whatever it yeah. is, just to support. Yeah. But it is always a selfie. Mm -hmm. So if it is what it is, just give them what they want. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you can't fight it, you know? Like, I, I, I love that. Fine, you know? And then there's, and then there's also a, a thing about times. Like, a lot of the time I post my photos, like, while I'm in bed, while I have the time to just, like, oh, I didn't post anything. Let me just post it now. Yeah. And I noticed that, like, yeah, they get a lot. They get, they get likes, but it's always, like, that random midday, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock post that you post that everybody is always, like, that gets the most engagement, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and hashtags, I use hashtags. I use one specific for whatever is in the post like if I want people to find it um then for a while I was putting like coronavirus in a bunch of my hashtag and a bunch of my posts just because like everybody's looking up coronavirus so might as well throw the hashtag in there 
because that's just what's going to show up on the feed. Um, there's certain searches that I like to show up search pages. So I always put Miami real estate in any of my real estate posts, because I just want to know that like when you go to a search page and you type Miami real estate, I always want to show up on one of those searches. So I do little things that are strategic. Then I'll put like Bethany Miami, just so I can go and see if anybody ever looked up Bethany Miami, they'll see my posts, you know? So there's definitely strategic ones. And then like, it's just, I always think of what do I want to get, what, who do I want to see this post and who's looking up those hashtags? And that's how I kind of gauge which hashtags. And then sometimes I don't even put hashtags, you know, and I still get a bunch of, you know, you still get interaction and like, because of the content that you're writing in the bottom, you know? Right. Talk to us a little bit about bio and what you have in your bio and what's worked for you. So I... Oh, I used to have like my website and then when it was females for profit for the time of the event, I put the event website there where they can buy tickets. Um, right. Then a couple months ago, I've been for the longest last year, I've been using Linktree, which is a like link bio. They just go to all your links. And now I discovered this new one called milkshake, which is really cool. Cause it's like a mini website in your bio. So you can do an about me page and then it swipes then you can do all your links then it swipes and then you can link to your YouTube channel and put like all your top videos and they can actually watch your videos in your LinkedIn bio. So if you go to my LinkedIn bio, I have it now. I don't have the YouTube page set up because I haven't gotten that far yet, but it's pretty cool. Huh? That's so awesome. You need to make a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to explore the idea. I have a YouTube channel. I just don't yeah. post on it, but so I'm opening... Better. I'm trying to start a podcast for females yeah. for profit so that I can interview women that I love and that I want to collaborate with on females for profit. So that's what I'm working on a podcast. I'm like, got this long list of everything that you want to do. You know well, what I've heard? Um, you could just do the podcast, shoot a video of, you know, and post it on the channel. And yeah. Post it on the channel, stress the audio, take that audio and put it on the podcast. Yes. So it's yes. like, two birds with one stone exactly it is yeah totally if you is. haven't if you haven't checked into anchor yet uh that's what i use now i have the app right here yeah my friend that's like trying to motivate me and push me to do a podcast um i told me about anchor so yes. I'm like I'm so working. good do you have Perfect. a podcast does anybody have a podcast um so we post some of the uh masterminds um i upload those to anchor from time to time cool yeah. And um, I do the same thing. Just like Stevie said, you just post the video, like this is recording. We post this to YouTube and then post the audio version to anchor. Yeah. Um, and then that way, like from there, it gets like syndicated out to like all the different podcast platforms. So if you're listening on Spotify or if you're listening oh, on, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work on that. That's next. That's next on the quarantine to list. So I'm almost like, so many things gonna end soon and I'm like I haven't gotten everything done yeah <laughs> and I, know, like, I feel like so many people they've been like chilling and they've been reading and they've been working out and all these things and I'm like I've been working and on a million zoom calls a day but I know I'm, I'm so trying busy. to get at my YouTube like every week I post this but I also have been trying to post content for buyers sellers and for other real estate agents but I mean, that's kind of like a long game thing. Like you have to stay consistent with it, just like with yeah. anything else. If you want to do mailers or you want to do social media and get clients from it, like I didn't just start social, social media and start getting clients right, right away. Like it's been a long game. Yeah. So that's kind of like my mindset behind it is like, just keep putting content out there and it's going to stick. And you can make content out of anything, mm -hmm. anything, yeah. anything, especially for real estate. We shouldn't overthink it too much. Like, oh, this is not going to be the best. Like, you know what? Just put yeah. content out for your market, for your, for your neighbors, for your network, for your clients, like whatever you think could be valuable. It probably is, you know, and that's really what content's all about. Someone wrote, my team leader started a podcast. Check her out. Okay, perfect. I will. American, America's properties. That's like, that's definitely interesting. Are you on TikTok? Love it. I am. But I'm like, I heard so many things about TikTok. Like, like my girl, my best friend was like a conspiracy theorist. She's like, 
don't go on TikTok. I'm like, but it's so much fun. So oh, that's I know. Like, it's like getting the like, dad. leave me alone. Like, I just want to do videos. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I heard the same thing and I was like, well, it's already downloaded. So they got all the info. I know, I know. It's already too late. She's like, it's already too late. You're on it. I'm like, all right, then I'll just keep posting whatever you want. That is awesome. All right. Any last questions before we wrap up? I know we're getting close on time. It feels like the 30 minutes goes by so fast. I know it does. We only get to share like small little nuggets of info. Yeah. Uh, I would just recommend if anybody's having a struggle with posting, I mean, you can just create yourself a calendar and just list like every week I'm putting a post about a few different things and just give yourself just like you time block prospecting and all that time block con- content creation. I like I'm my most creative like in the morning. So I really try to like the days that I'm going to spend in the office or like admin days is the days that I try to plan out like what content want content I want to put. And then on top of that, like whenever I do like photo I or photos for a property or a photo shoot I try to get a bunch of photos at once that I think I'm gonna like use in advance and then she's a what site does that does auto post for you so I use later for my females for profit account because it's very like there's a flow and there's a purpose and it's I can plan it all out in advance and I use later to schedule those posts and then and then post them and that one's that one's good because you can have it for your personal account. You can have it for a business account and it helps you like organize everything better, I think. And then, um, I always like use like an app called plan or like Planoly. There's a bunch of them. And I always like put my posts in there, write out my, my content. Cause you can make it look cute and spaced out. And then I will post it to my, my Instagram from the app just so I can like write in it. I don't know if you've ever been in the middle of writing a really juicy long post and you're like, so in the zone. And the next thing you know, you like click out for a second and you have to click back and everything was deleted. So like I have had that happen way too many times and I've just gotten so frustrated because I'm like, I can't rethink that. Like that was just so on the spot. So I learned to write my posts in plan or an app like that where I can just write them and like leave it there and go back to it if I ever want to finish it or whatever. Or God forbid someone calls me, it doesn't get deleted. And then I just like post from there. That's kind of like where I'm like, like where I've drafted. So yeah. And I used later and loved it. It's like a hundred bucks for the year. So it's not super expensive. And if anybody is a KW agent on here uh, with Keller Williams, Command now does this for free within the designs tab. So um, anybody who's on here with Keller Williams, let me know if you need help because like, that's my jam. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool that your company does that. And I saw another question that came through. What app do you use for giveaways? Uh, I don't really use an app for giveaways. I mean, I, if I do a giveaway, I usually do it on my story and I usually post about it and I'll give the instructions there, but I don't know about any app for giveaways. I would love to do it. No. I was like, oh, there's, an app, there's like an app to do like the spin where you put everybody's oh. name who entered in the giveaway and you can like spin and it'll wrap up the winner. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. For that. that is really cool. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to look at that. Uh, right. Email, phone, number, ad- oh, um, I mean, I think she means for like registering for giveaways. So um, I would use like a Google form or have them register on your website or, you know, something like that. That's just like a suggestion. But like you can create a Google form and you can customize yeah. it and you can make like a form for everything. I know. I love Google Drive. I think I rock Phoebe's world when I introduced I her to it. Oh my God, yeah, I have Google Drive for everything. I like <laughs> I really my life out of Google Drive. She's like, what is this? I'm like, oh girl, let me show you. <laughs> I use it every single day and I always think, oh my God, what was I doing before? Yeah, what were you doing before? Were you like me that you just had a bunch of files and folders on your desktop? And I was so confused. Like when Amanda was like telling me all these different things and she sent me this file and I was like, where? She's like, you're <laughs> And I was like, what? I am so tech savvy. Like I have realtors here who are always like, hey, I need help with XYZ. And I'm like, I have no idea. (laughs) You're like social media. I got you. All that other stuff. I got you. Everything else. Oh no. Like I live off the cloud. Like everything is in the cloud. 
Yeah, you know? for sure. I lost my computer a long time ago. It got stolen in my car on a showing. Mm. And so I used to have all my files saved on my desktop and I never really backed anything up in the cloud. Now I can access whatever is in my drive, on my cloud, on my desktop. I can access from my phone. I could lose yeah. my phone. I could lose my laptop. I could lose everything and just pull up my drive on anybody's computer and be able to operate all my files. So yes. like, no, I'm mobile, you know, like I live in the cloud and at the end of the day, I can work from anywhere. So we work from Wi-Fi too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so love much Anthony, for coming on here. Such last minute. I feel like we just shared so much valuable content. It was so much fun. Yes. yes. So thank fun. you. You're just rocking it. And you shared some really valuable tips with us that we can go and implement you know, immediately. Thank you so much. I love you girls. I love what you're doing and What's I'm here to support um, anything Instagram. you do. Oh, my yes. Instagram is, I'll type it in here. It's at Bethany Martinez PA. So I would love if you guys follow me, if you have any questions, yes. anything at all, I am here. So I just wrote it in the chat for everybody. All right. What does the PA stand for? So it's how I incorporated my business. So my business is Bethany Martinez PA. So it's my real estate business. Um, it's usually like you could do an LLC, one of those, like an, it's just an incorporation. You, whether you do an Inc, an LLC or a PA, I just happen to do a PA. Um, so it's the way that I file my taxes and the way that my business is incorporated. But the thing is, Bethany, my old Instagram used to be Bethany Miami. So when I lost that, um, a lot of the time it was like, I didn't, I wanted everything to kind of sync together. Like I wanted everything to be the same, my business page, my business, Facebook, my Instagram name, my YouTube channel. So I just figured if everything was Bethany Martinez, I'd be findable, you know, like if God forbid I ever lost my Instagram again, or God forbid I ever lost anything, my name wasn't going to be something that's difficult to find, you know, cause it's something that they see every day. So Bethany Martinez was taken and Bethany Martinez underscore was taken. So I put Bethany Martinez PA and it wasn't taken. So I just, I said, Hey, that's my business name anyway. So I'll just roll with it. Awesome. Just curious. Cause I automatically think Pennsylvania and I'm like, wait a second, hold on. Yeah, or, or a physician's assistant. I've had yes. like that are like, Oh, you're a doctor. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> In my day job. <laughs> like, yeah, if that's like what you like for today, I'll be your doctor. No, I'm joking. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, it's funny because people have asked me that before. And I'm like, oh, it's, I've seen a lot of realtors with PA. So I guess I just, I don't I had to put mine on my Instagram because they didn't have Bethany Martinez. Got it. Just curious. Well, thank you, ladies. It was so much. Thank it was so nice talking to you guys. I hope you but enjoyed. Yes. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great night.